one when I was in a, a boxing ring and Jessica gets in to fight my character. Um, so it's Max versus Alec and she's like, she's like, okay, so we're gonna start the shot off and I'm just gonna, it's gonna be a straight right punch right to the face and boom, and I step back. Well, she lined it up like this. She's like, okay, then she stepped back. And I'm like, all right, well now she's even further back. Well, what I didn't take into account is that she's going to lean into the punch. <laughs> so she went, boom, and caught me square in the nose. And, which is why it's so jacked up looking. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, that and many other reasons. Um, but it was, uh, it was one of those where, and I was still, I was still young enough to be like, well, I can't stop. You know, I can't yell, cut, that hurt. <laughs> and now, now I'm older and it's, all the time. I, I was gonna say, now I'm older and more experienced and yet I still don't say, cut, that hurt. Um, but, uh, but there was that one and there was another one. There's a lot of me getting hit. Um, there's another one where uh, the Beresford Agenda was the episode and there was uh, a, a young actress and she comes up to me and slaps me. And I, for some reason, she couldn't get the timing right. Like she just, something was, she couldn't do the fake slap. But, so I was kind of getting frustrated. I'm like, just hit me, just hit me. Just, just get, just, I'm like, she's, you know, I'm just a small girl. Like how hard, could, how bad could it be? Y'all pack a punch. Cause my whole face welded, but like, it was like a welt of just like a handprint with like fingers. And it, and like the whole crew just, it was like, whack! And the whole crew was like, ooh! <laughs> um, I've learned not to let them do that now. Uh, that doesn't, that doesn't mean I don't catch a few elbows or, or knuckles here, here and there, which is just part of the, you know, that, that happens every now and again. But um, yeah, I'll never just sign up to get hit anymore. That's, no thanks. I can go out to a bar and get in a fight. I don't need to. I don't need to get defensiveless, defense, defensiveless, defensive, defenseless, defensive, defen yes. no defense. At the end of the Scooby Natural episode, uh, when Dean does the Scooby Dooby Doo, I'm wondering about how long that took, how many takes. It seems like there's some laughing going on. So we were, there was a small crowd of, of uh, people who had gathered across the street. Um, we had been filming inside the store all, all day and, and there was a, a small crowd of people that had gathered to, to watch the, the film crew. Probably just going like, is it Arrow? Is it, <laughs> is it Legends of Tomorrow? Is it, oh, it's Super Oh, okay. Um, I'm just kidding. They knew who we were. Uh, and so... <laughs> Well, they did because he hires them to show up so that when they walk out, they go, Jared! Yeah, it's like a whole thing. It's been going on for years. They forgot their lines um, though first. Right. Yeah. So they had to call all their agents. But, but we walk out onto the street and we've, we've like framed the people out across the street. So they're all still there. I mean, they're within, you know, 20 yards of us. And they can't really hear what we're saying because we're just having regular dialogue. But I knew that as soon as. I did that line, people were gonna be like, what? Because <laughs> they didn't know we were filming. And, and I just remember like thinking like, wow, this is really embarrassing. <laughs> and I was legitimately embarrassed to say that line because there was a bunch of people who didn't understand the context and didn't know that we were doing a crossover show, and, like the whole thing. And I'm like, they're just gonna hear me say this line from this old cartoon and they're gonna be like, Wow, this show has really jumped the shark. <laughs> They're just pulling out every stop they can. Um, and so it was, it was tough. Yeah, like They've gotten so old, they're animating themselves now to not have to be on camera. Yeah, I, I, I was, that was an embarrassing moment, legitimately. Yeah. Oh, my. It's too early. So, the, uh, the, the uh, motto of the con is look at Jensen, because I am... Uh, but don't look at his knees, because that looks swollen. What did you do yesterday? 
Just right out of the gate. Just here, burp, burp, here comes the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Jensen ran for three hours yesterday. So. Oh. Oh. And I'm, I'm gonna throw somebody else under the bus. Uh, it would have been a lot less had I not had a running partner. <laughs> three hours later, I was like hobbling back to the hotel, and I don't know, I messed my knee up pretty bad. So you see this. me limping around. That's yeah. yeah, I will um, say this. He said the office. It's, it's fine, all right? <laughs> it's self induced. I'm not going to complain about it. Well, listen, we did get a, you know, basically from the hip down picture of eyes on his knees. And most of my guy friends were like, why'd you send that? <laughs> no, that's not what they said. <laughs> they wanted to see more. <laughs> because, because they're sick. <laughs> In the head. Uh, it's, it was a pretty sexy picture, I'll admit. You know, it's like, uh, it's just it's just bare legs. And so they go like this first. <laughs> and then there's ice, and then they come right back in their feet. <laughs> Maybe that's why my knee hurts. <laughs> because they're at right angles the wrong way. <laughs> What was it? It was so the other day. You were like, like I, I, I sleep. I'm a side sleeper with a knee uh, with a pillow in like, my yeah, knees, and I'm like, oh, I'm a side sleeper uh, with, but instead of a pillow, I have an exercise ball. <laughs> and, and, and my legs fit perfectly around. <laughs> it's an exercise ball or six pillows. All right. <laughs> I'll say one of my favorite. These like, there's. So many. Are you guys getting all of these these calls now? These, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all day, every day. Dude. Uh, it's so anyway. One of my, one of my favorite uh, uh, one of these sales calls uh, happened to a buddy of mine. We we're we we're uh, in a in an Uber headed to a restaurant or something, and he answered it. And it was a guy selling uh, home security. And my my oh. buddy, and my buddy goes, man, I'm. I'm so glad you called. You couldn't have picked a better time. Uh, there's so much blood. <laughs> and, okay, and he went on and he's like, he's like, God, because he's like, it's turned, there's blood everywhere. I just need to know what to do next. <laughs> and, and he kept it going. And the guy was like, oh. Um, and finally, the salesman ended up hanging up on him. <laughs> Yeah. It's done. It's done. <laughs> I need to know the next steps. Actually, I'm, the, I'm here with my friend. She bought my tickets. My first time here. And uh, she had a question. We work, we work in child care. And we were wondering if you guys ever do drop off and pick up for your kids at school. And, you know, are, the, are the kids really big fans? Do you, do you ever? Uh, I think most of ours are too young to know. My... <laughs> Oh, sorry, um, we, we work with uh, actually infants and young toddlers. We didn't know are they big fans of Supernatural as well? <laughs> they talk about it a lot. They see your picture all over. <laughs> you know, my the first experience I had with it, I, I guess with Tom and Shep and Odette, obviously it's, it's not even two years old yet. With Tom and Shep, their, their kids don't really know, you know, and um, their buddies in school. And I guess Tom and Shep know that Uncle Jensen is on TV with Daddy and you know this and that. And that. Um, but my my niece is, uh, she's 10 years old, and I remember about two years ago, she started going, hey, Uncle Jared, why are my teachers knowing, or asking if I know you? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so, and she's old enough to grab a computer and Google search and stuff, so hopefully she doesn't watch scenes with Uncle Jared and Jen. Well, uh, even, if, even if the kids don't know you, I'm sure the teachers are. Say again? I'm sorry, even if the kids don't know you, I'm sure the teachers well, the, uh, um, I was dropping off JJ the other day, and there's a security guard there at the school. And uh, this, was, uh, this was the first time I'd, I'd, I'd met him. And as I was walking by, he just kind of put his hand on his, uh, on his belt, and he just kind of leaned over. He's like, you're not packing, are you, Dean? And I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, the, the students aren't, aren't quite there yet, but the, certainly the faculty. Yeah, side note, 
And the security guard's name is Safe. <laughs> yes, that's the IF, Safe. It's like, that's awesome. But the it's a good code safe. name. It's a good code name. Uh, thank you for your question. You know, one doing a, a reverse 80 in the in baby, uh, a reverse 180 in baby, uh, in, in doing that, uh, you know, I got to do that several times. Um, the first time I did it, it just I love the moment of uh, our, our guest star sitting next to me. She's she's in the dress. It wasn't me. It wasn't yeah. she. Uh, and she just looks at me. And she's like, "You've done this before, right?" And I looked at her. And they were literally like, "And roll camera." And I'm like, "Now's not a good time to ask me that." <laughs> uh, That's a great question. Thank you, Emily. Um, We've had a lot of stuff. What do you think about? <laughs> you go first. Oh, <laughs> you think about this past week? <laughs> uh, it's gonna make the gag real, I'm sure. But there's some stuff that happened in the filming of episode seven. Um, let's just say it involves uh, uh, Jensen, uh, Misha, um, Alexander, and me. And it's sort of becoming. There's a lot of improv. So there's a, a lot of improv, probably some broken ribs. Um, yeah, some broken ribs, I'd say. Maybe a, maybe a torn swing. No, there, there are some funny, so it, it, it makes me laugh because for years, it was Jensen and me uh, teasing Misha, you know, season four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve. Then Alexander came on season 13, and Misha's like, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, new victim, and every now and again it's a funny thing <laughs> where Misha will make a joke and look to Jensen and me and we'll be like, no. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, but yeah, the, the hazing of Alex has gone on way too far, but it'll continue. Uh, and he's a great sport about it, despite cursing us before he goes to bed. Voodoo dolls? Well, yeah, and let's just say, in, you know, as. I don't think it's any uh, secret that uh, Jack's vessel has, um, well, his the, the, the his being has gone through some dramatic changes at the end of last season, and that picks up puberty, right? Uh, and that picks up the beginning of season 14, and, and his his vessel is having some difficulties adjusting to uh, his circumstances, and uh, so he, he's he's having challenges. Um, you know, it's like almost like getting very, very sick. And uh, let's just say he, he collapsed a few times, uh, his character obviously, he collapses a few times in this episode that we just filmed. Um, which of course, him hitting the floor is is just a green light for a, a doggy pile. So it's just dog pile central for the entire episode. And he's not a big guy. We are. But the funny thing is, Misha jumping in too is so excited to be on this side of the fence. He, he's, he's, really, like the he's first, real excited. He's like the first to die. <laughs> and and uh, poor Alex, he's he's gonna he's gonna need to see not only a doctor but a therapist as well. We calculated it's about 600 pounds laying on Alex every time he falls on the ground. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, I will so, say though that after about the fourth or fifth take, he started like full defensive positions on the floor. Full butterfly? Yeah, and, uh, and our stunt coordinator had to come in and start helping defend him. Um, it's, uh, it's not professional. And hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this. He and I are making a concerted effort to when something goofy or silly happens, we make sure to say, because when, when they call action and they start rolling, when they call cut, let's say you do three takes of a scene, uh, they'll usually only print the one or two or three of, let's say you do six takes, rather. They'll print one, two or three of the best ones, and, but, you know, one, something went wrong, the lighting was wrong, or we didn't have our marks, or we forgot our lines, and sometimes there's a, a goofy one, but they have to say to the script supervisor, make sure you print take three, even if it's just them goofing around. So, I know a few times we've both been like, hey, make sure you print that so it can be part of the gag reel. My goal for this season is to have like a two hour gag reel. Amen. 
one. Thanks, Emily. Okay, so uh, JJ likes to get fired up on her way to school, and um, she uh, she makes me like turn it all the way up for uh, that song, uh, fight song. <laughs> Rachel like platinum. Is that it? Well, that's a good yeah. song. There's a great voice. Yeah, but it's not something I you know I'm gonna. But here's the problem, is that I'll play it when she's not in the car, too. <laughs> I'll be like, Feel my bad dogs, and I'll be at a red light, and I'll just look over, and it'll be like some cool guy in the and I'm like, <laughs> you, you got it all wrong, because you have tinted windows, so you need to go, this is my f my daughter likes it. <laughs> Point to the back seat. Let me, let me think about that. I don't know. That's one for now, but I'm sure that'll change in you know six weeks. Yeah. And I'll be singing some other person song that I've never heard of before. Um, a lot of times I find myself uh, at night when I'm at home. Um, I have a a, a a good sized front yard, and it has. Uh, lights in the trees that have pools of light in the in the yard um, when I walk by the window the front windows I'll look out there and it'll just be darkness with like these kind of pools of light and almost a hundred percent of the time I expect to see somebody standing there I, I, and it is because of that movie and uh, obviously they're wearing like a happy mask and, but they're just just standing there like this in the pool of light. <laughs> that would send me into a frenzy. And by that I mean that would send me to my gun safe. Uh, I, until you said it, the same thing. So we have, our property has cameras all over the place. Uh, and one of the camera systems sends alerts. So every now and again I'll be home in Austin and it'll be, you know, like midnight, midnight 30, and I'll get, bling, you know, no, uh, motion, a sense in front yard. And I'm like, do I want to look? Or is there somebody standing there? Because oftentimes it's just the light changes slightly, or, or the neighbor drives his car. And or lightning, or, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, a bug next to the camera system. Uh, and I'm like, man, eh. I'll make sure the doors, Jen, Genevieve makes me walk around all the doors and windows before going to bed to make sure they're closed and locked. Um, probably because that movie. I'll, li I'll leave you with this. I, I, not a word of a lie. The other day, uh, this was maybe a couple of weeks ago, um, I was in my, uh, my living room and I was, uh, I was watching the late night football game. Everybody else had gone to bed. And uh, my, I kind of see, you can see my front porch from if you're sitting on the couch and out the windows. Uh, and I looked out there and the, por the porch lights were on, you could see the porch, but then it kind of just disappeared in the darkness, which then you get out in the yards and you get the pools of light. But just in that, that, that pool, of the, that light that was the front porch, um, and this is another movie that's played on this fear that it originated from strangers, is The Purge. And I sat there and I instantly envisioned several people in masks walking into the light. And now this means that they're A, they're on my property. B, they probably aren't here to, you know, hand out Girl Scout cookies. Uh, and three, this is my greatest fear is, which way do I go first? Do I go to my closet? to get something to protect myself and my family? Or do I go to my children's rooms? And I sat there and I started like sweating, thinking about this, like, what would I do in that moment? Would I, would I go to protect my children barehanded? Or would I go this way and hope that they don't beat me back to them? That was a real fear I had. And it like, it struck me and then I was like, well, I'm turning this off and going to bed because <laughs> I can't enjoy this game anymore. Uh, and those, those were fears that were born out of movies like that. So, yeah. He gets a little bit more 
grand with his pranks than I, I, I tend to just subtly, yeah, we're, we're more opportunists than we are planning pranksters. Um, I think I still laugh at, there are two that stick out in my head. One is when Misha kicked us off set, uh, and the other is when Nina kicked us off set <laughs> for making Alex laugh. Although recently, recently he was kicked off, off of the set because um, Misha couldn't get his coverage because he was, um, he was messing with Misha so, so bad. And he was kicked out of the room, not off the soundstage, but just out of the room. And, and, and I'm, I'm, watch, I'm reading opposite Misha giving my lines, somebody else is giving Jared's lines. And I'm off camera, and Misha's giving his, his performance, and, and I look behind him, and the door that Jared had walked out of is about, you know, 15, 20 feet behind Misha. And I just look, I look over Misha's shoulder, and here comes Jared army crawling. <laughs> back onto set. And all, the whole crew can see yeah. this, Misha cannot. Yet. And so Misha then looks, looks like a different direction and I, I lean into our camera operator's ear and I'm like, tilt down, tilt down. And so, <laughs> so the camera goes down, finds Jared doing this. <laughs> so now everybody back at Video Village that's not in the room is now seeing this on the monitors, Jared crawling back towards like a shark in the water. Because I had to be below the frame. Right. And so it tilts back up and, and Misha continues <laughs> and then you just see the, uh, and I, I don't know what, did you grab his like Achilles tendon or something? No, I, I grabbed the inside of his leg. Oh, right. It's a little love as, tension. As you do. Where's the most, where's the tenderest spot? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, were, there were markings on both of their bodies by the, yeah. the, the time we were done filming this yeah. scene. And it looked like they'd gone to some like odd bondage party. That's the funny thing is that later we did a different scene and um, it was now my coverage that Misha wasn't in. And so I'm sitting there and chatting. All of a sudden I feel fingers behind like the in inside upper part of my arm. And I'm like, oh, it's me. <clears throat> okay, I deserve this. I know I deserve this. So I'm gonna keep on going. And it was, it took like breathing exercises to try and not break like a tear. Well, down. he's performing. Like he's delivering trying, lines yeah. as Sam Winchester. Yeah. And, and just through, through excruciating pain. And he showed me his arm afterwards. It looked like he'd been flogged. Yeah. And the next day I'm in a t-shirt and Tom was like, Daddy, what's in your arm? And I was like, <laughs> long story. I'd rather not tell you. Works tough, kid. Um, but I came here and competed when I was a sophomore in high school and y'all still had the rock and roll McDonald's downtown. And this is, mind you, this is a... Uh, this is a 15-year-old kid out of San Antonio, Texas, you know, grew up in suburbia. And I wanted to go, I forget what the story was. We were like, we were here with drama and I was eating, we were eating at maybe the Rainforest Cafe or something. Yeah, and I wanted to walk to the, isn't it right, right next to the, okay. So I wanted to walk to the Rock and Roll McDonald's and take pictures because my mom had heard about it and wanted to see pictures of it. And so I told my teacher, I was like, hey, while we wait for the food, can I walk the two blocks? And my teacher's like, well, it's, you know, like you don't really walk around Chicago by yourself. And he sent me with one of the seniors whose name is Sean Hall. Um, and so Sean was, you know, 18 years old. He was a senior. I was 15. I was a sophomore. And Sean was a little more savvy than I was. I think he grew up, you know, in a bigger city. And so we're walking to the Rock and Roll McDonald's. And I don't think I'd ever really run across somebody who, on the street, who asks you for money. You know, like, hey, can spare some change kind of thing. And... Um, <laughs> Not a word of a lie, we go to the Rock and Roll McDonald's, take some pictures, and you remember you have to kind of like skinny up in all the little hallways and take memorabilia. And then on the way back to the Rainforest Cafe, sure enough, this guy approaches us and asks, asks me if he can have $500. And my instinct, I was kind of taken aback, and so I responded with, I'm sorry, I only have big bills. <laughs> <laughs> to which Sean Hall just went, we're going, and grabbed me. And kind of like, I was like, that's really the wrong thing to say. And I feel like the guy, I, I, he gave me a very enigmatic look. I think he sort of was like, I probably should rob this kid, but he's just too dumb. Like, I'm just going to. He's going to need those big he's bills gonna need more those than big I. Bills to... I'll never forget. I went there. I took, uh, I took my wife there. Um, it was me and Daniil and Misha. The three of us went and ate there uh, a few years back. And real spicy food you know, from New Orleans. You know, grew up like Cajun spices and, and all things spicy. And, and I do.
You too, so a lot of spice in our house. Um, and... <laughs> And we also have a lot of spices. Um, and she ordered these peppers that they serve there. And, and you know, like you order like, uh, uh, like char-grilled serrano peppers or something like that. You just eat them. So these, this bowl of peppers comes out. And, and she, she ate one. And, like, things started changing immediately. And, like just she started crying and she was like oh my gosh oh my gosh um yeah she kind of looked like this well i was just like sweating and and then she's like oh my gosh this, this these are the hottest things i've ever put in my mouth and and i was like what and she's like food food and so and then immediately because misha didn't wait to see how it turned out he grabs one and he throws anyway long story short cut to they're pouring water on their faces and just like every their whole face is just leaking on the and i'm sitting there going like mm -mm, i ain't trying that and to this day i've never seen her react and misha can attest like, he, he was like that was it was like torture whatever whatever they served them was not what they had said it was um so, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just pouring milk, like, I mean, it was it was hilarious from my where I was sitting, and so to this day, it's still one of my favorite places. <laughs>